Now I'd like to talk about ringing in the ears. This is something that I get asked about a lot. And uh, speaking of signal to noise, I, I don't know if I get asked about it a lot because many people suffer from ringing in their ears or because the people who suffer from ringing in their ears suffer so much that they are more prone to ask. So it could be a sampling bias. I don't know. But I've been asked enough times uh, and some of the experiences of discomfort that people have expressed about having this ringing of the ears uh, really motivated me to go deep into this literature. So the ringing of the ears that one experiences is called tinnitus. Not tinnitus, but tinnitus. And tinnitus can vary in intensity and it can vary according to stress levels. It can vary across the lifespan or even time of day. So it's very subject to kind of background effects and c contextual effects. So I think, you know, we all know that we should do our best to maximize healthy sleep. We all know that we should try and limit our stress. However, there are people, it seems, that are suffering from tinnitus for which stress or lack of sleep just can't explain the presence of the tinnitus. Tinnitus can be caused by disruption to these hair cells that we talked about earlier or damage to the hair cells. So that's another reason why even if you have good hearing now that you want to protect that hearing and really avoid putting yourself into these kind of two hit environments, environments where there's a lot of background noise and then you add another really loud auditory stimulus. This is also can happen at different times, I should mention. If you go to a concert or you listen to loud music with your headphones and then you go to a concert or you go into a very loud work environment, the hair cells can still be vulnerable. And once those hair cells are knocked out, Currently, we don't have the technology to put them back, although many groups, including some excellent groups at Stanford and elsewhere, too, of course, are working on ways to replenish those hair cells and restore hearing. There are treatments for tinnitus that involve taking certain substances. There are medications for tinnitus. In the non-prescription landscape, there are essentially four compounds for which there are quality peer-reviewed data where there does not appear to be any overt commercial bias, meaning that nothing's reported in the papers as you know funding from a particular company. And those are melatonin, ginkgo bilboa, zinc, and magnesium. Now, I've talked about melatonin before. I'm personally not a fan of melatonin as a sleep aid, but there are four studies. First one entitled The Effects of Melatonin, melatonin on Tinnitus tinnitus, excuse me, and sleep. Second one, treatment of central and sensory neural tinnitus with orally administered melatonin. And then the title goes on much longer, but it's a randomized study. I'm not going to read out all of these. Melatonin, can it stop the ringing? Which is an interesting article, double-blinded uh, study, and the effects of melatonin on tinnitus. Each one of these studies has anywhere from 30 to more than 100 subjects. In one case, 102 subjects, both genders, as they list them out. Typically, uh, it's listed as sex, not gender in studies, so it should say both sexes, but uh, nonetheless. Um, an age range anywhere from 30 years old all the way up to 65 plus. I didn't see any studies of people younger than 30. All three focus on melatonin, not surprisingly because of the titles. Looking at a range of dosages anywhere from three milligrams per day, which is sort of typical of many supplements for melatonin, still much higher than one would manufacture endogenously through your own pineal gland. But three milligrams in these studies for a duration of anywhere from 30 days to much longer in some cases, six months. And all four of these studies found modest yet still statistically significant effects of taking melatonin by mouth, so it's orally administered melatonin, in reducing the severity of tinnitus. So that's compelling, at least to me. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't sound like a cure. And of course, as always, I'm not a physician. I'm a scientist, so I don't prescribe anything. I only profess things. I report to you the science. You have to decide if melatonin is right for you, if you have tinnitus. 
And certainly I say that both to protect myself, but also protect you. You're responsible for your health and well-being. And I'm not telling anyone to run out and start taking melatonin for tinnitus, but it does seem that it can have some effects in reducing its symptoms. Ginkgo biloba is an interesting compound. It's, you know, it's been prescribed for or recommended for many, many things. But there are a few studies, again, double-blinded studies lasting one to six months. Anywhere, one that has an impressive number of subjects, 978 subjects ranging from age 18 all the way up to 65, so on and so forth, that show not huge effects of ginkgo, but the as they quote, limited evidence suggests that if tinnitus is a side effect of something else, in particular cognitive decline, so age-related tinnitus might be helped by ginkgo bilboa. I won't go through all the details of the zinc studies, but it seems that zinc supplementation at higher levels than are typical of most people's intakes of 50 milligrams per day do appear to be able to reduce subjective symptoms of tinnitus in most of the people that took the supplemented zinc. There aren't a lot of studies on that, so I could only find one double-blinded study. It lasted anywhere from one to six months, 41 subjects, both genders listed out again here, 45 to 64, and they saw a decrease in the severity of tinnitus symptoms with 50 milligrams of elemental zinc supplementation. And then last but not least is the magnesium study. Again, only a single study. It's a phase two study looking at a fairly limited number of subjects, so only 19 subjects, taking 532 milligrams of elemental magnesium. For those of you that take magnesium, there's magnesium and elemental magnesium, and it's always translated on the on the bottle. But it was associated with a lessening of symptoms related to tinnitus. So for you tinnitus sufferers out there, you may already be aware of this. You may already be taking these things uh, and had no positive effects, meaning they didn't help, maybe not. I hope that um, you'll at least consider these, talk to your doctor about them. I do realize that tinnitus is extremely disruptive. I can't say I empathize uh, because I don't, um, from a place of experience that is, because I don't have tinnitus, but for those of you that don't, including myself, you can imagine that hearing sounds of things that aren't there and the ringing in one's ears can be very disruptive and I think um, would be very disruptive and explains why people with tinnitus reach out so often with questions about how to alleviate that and I hope this information was useful to you.